And uh, okay, so the major types of neural networks first is a convolution neural network called CNN. Another one is the recurrent neural network. Uh, the uh, specialty is that this has a loop, recurrent connections or inside the network. So it's called a recurrent neural network. And then the most uh, popular network now, the generative adversarial neural network, which contains two parts: the generative part, generative part, and adversarial part. And then the attention and the transformer. Oh, attention and transformer. So first, the basic one is a convolutional neural networks, which was proposed by Yang Lacken. It uh, has a convolution filter, which can capture features. Uh, it's actually another weighted sound filter, uh, and it will have response if the, your input is match certain characteristic, or uh, like the corner or a certain color. Uh, the filter will filter the important features of an usually image. Also, it was designed for recognize the MNIST character. Uh, and it's has a convolution, and then we'll do subsampling, convolution, subsampling, and later the fully connected output, or uh, output uh, the probability of the 10 numbers, uh, like MNIST. So, Yang Lak invented it uh, in 1990s, uh, and then, but nobody cares. So, because the performance was bad. Uh, first, the data is not large enough. The second, uh, there's no GPU at that time. The computer was very weak. So the neural networks was not popular. Okay, so doing this time for computer vision compu community. Uh, uh, Professor Fei Fei Li uh, in Stanford created a large data set called ImageNet. Uh, she want to create a benchmark to evaluate the performance of different uh, computer vision algorithms. Uh, so ImageNet try to uh, prepare images for all the nouns in English. Uh, they actually have uh, like uh, 20,000 classes. But uh, Fei Fei Li select the 10,000 class from her data set, which with high quality. And each data set, uh, she uh, actually her students uh, or some data labelers uh, prepare around 1,000 images for each class, and then additional 50,000 validation images and uh, 10,000 test images uh, for each. So there are total number of images uh, is around 1 million training data set. Was a very large data set at that time. Uh. So then they hold a combination called ImageNet uh, challenge. So here it shows the, the error rate. Lower is better. So if you calculate 100 minus the, this number, 28.2, you will get the accuracy. Uh, so around 71.8. And uh, the error rate gradually reduced uh, using the SVM model, uh, shadow model. That's about the time that I'm studying PhD. I remember that I spent a lot of time get familiar with SVM model. Huh? Then here comes Winton, Hinton, huh? Hinton create oh, Hinton and his student first successfully trained an accurate model using GPU. They are not the one first train your network with GPU. Oh, but they are the first one that uh, achieve top results on ImageNet. So that breaks to change everything. So now, before that, nobody, still no one believe him because people believe that neural network is overfitting, which means they are only good at certain uh, data set. But, uh, okay, he and his students, uh, Alex, so now it's called Alex Net. Uh, create this neural network. It has two branches, but basically similar to Yang uh, neural network. It has a max pooling, it has convolution, then max pooling is actually the subsampling, convolution, max pooling, and then fully connected network, uh, and then it's reduced to 10,000, uh, 1,000, 1,000. It's look as there are two branches of the network. The only difference between this one and the Yanaka's original network 
signal only difference. The major difference between those two is that it has two bridges. But this is because the real memory of the GPU was not enough. So they separate the model on two GPU and then combine the output together. So basically the structure is similar to Yanakens. Huh? But they use the different activation function huh? and the sound tricks huh? like drop out huh? to get performance. So Hinton's team uh, successfully reduced the error rate by almost half. Huh? That's a breakthrough, huh? significant breakthrough at that time. And their model is a uh, eight layers model. After that, everybody was told uh, was studying the deep learning models. Huh? And somehow at that time, researchers find that the push is create more layers, make better results. More layers makes better results, so they try to push the limit. Until 2015, researchers from Microsoft Asia, Kai Ming He, Kai Ming He pushed the limit to 152 layers. So how about Somehow people find that uh, 100 is too much, too many, too many layers. Huh? Somebody tried to push 1,000, but no significant improvement. So today is around 2030, uh, 30s or 50s. Okay, so here's a comparison of the different uh, CNN models. We will view them later. Huh? So the idea is that at that time we should go deeper, right? Huh? Leonardo, huh? and then it's having her, having her push the limit. His idea is to because if the model is too deep, if the model is too big, then we calculate the gradient too many times. Huh? The information becomes smaller and smaller, and somehow vanish. Vanished. It's called gradient vanish problem. Huh? So to keep the information not too vanish, huh? they have a, a skip connection, identity connection to skip the original path. So if the data goes through multiple layers, does not better than the original one, or then you can keep the original information. Oh, it's your addition. It's called residual connection. Oh, as you can propose by kind of, oh, it's a simple but effective, very useful. Okay. So here's a comparison. Oh, there's a current idea, current models. Oh. So after so many years, do we have better architecture than convolution? Oh, convolution is still very effective, but today uh, the transformer or oh, attention module is very competitive. It's uh, sometimes achieve very good results. Oh. So another most popular application is the object detection, right? Uh, whatever you want to do in real environment, you need to identify the object first. Oh, so more or less you have been used the YOLO before, right? The most popular architecture is called YOLO. You only look once. Oh, you remember once. So I take a picture. Oh, the famous one well, of the famous authors uh, of YOLO V4 and V7, they uh, do research with NTUT uh, with our school. Oh, he's the author. They are the authors. This is me. I'm not the author. I just take picture with them uh, to show that I'm very professional. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, they are V4. So original, the, the original author do the first three versions, and then he decide to quit because he find that uh, his his technology has been abused. Right. The Euro detector has been used for military service or commercial. So he decide to quit. But after we he quit. Uh, many other researchers catch up. So somehow our human uh, try to, you know, and continue research, <laughs> continue development. Okay, so that's the uh, history of uh, convolution neural network. Another important wow. aspect is called a recurrent neural network. It has a loop back connection. This will connect the output as the input of the next stage. So in other words, it has a uh, memory, or it in fact indeed has a memory to save the output state and then use it as the input. So this is called recurrent connection. So it's good for use for time series data. You only have one cell, but we can expand the cell on time domain. So it looks like this. So for the input, 
zero, which is type zero, and output H zero, and the, the output will be passed to next stage. Uh, the neuron will memorize the output is zero and pass to next stage with the X one and then generate the H one. Uh, so RNN has memory and it's considered a temporal, uh, consider what happened before. So it's good for end or time series data, like uh, stock price, weather. Of course, uh, only six memory is not enough, so uh, Schumiburg proposed a new model called LSTM, or LSTM, which has uh, ability to, it has two paths, and it can use to memorize forever or forget something. So it's a more smart, uh, short, long short term memory. LSTM. And then uh, it's comes a mother architecture called sequence to this sequence model or oh, sequence. So RNN is used to process the natural language, right? a sentence or speech because it's good for memorize previous input. Oh, Our language has a temporal dependency, which means what I say before, what I say now. Right? So there is a tech, uh, a effort to do translation. It's first proposed to do language translation. That you will encode the input in one language. Suppose I suppose it's a French. I, uh, okay, and then it can be translated into other language. So it, it will be called into something else and then decode uh, into different language. So by using this approach, we can train data in English and then translate to multiple languages. Only language in the world. Okay, so it's a model, and uh, but somehow people find the R is not efficient enough. So there's a breakthrough paper called "Attention is All You Need," published by Google. And 2017, right? So six years ago, I heard that all the also have left Google oh, after that because this architecture is so powerful. Somebody go to OpenAI, somebody go to you know, other startups to get start options. Oh. But the attention architecture uh, is looks like this. Oh. Uh, basically, they try to pull the soft mix on top of the neural network and the soft mix function is just to show which part of the input is more important than others. Oh, the basic idea is to use another layer to show the importance of different part. Like human, we human only can only focus on one part of the data huh, at one time. Okay, so but uh, it's, uh, we will talk about details of so the ideas that huh, the idea is called attention module. Huh. Softmax is very popular in neural network. It's actually the final layer of neural uh, of CNN. But they borrow the idea from search engine because they are go engineers. So they suppose uh, there's an input. When we try to search on Google, we first input the keywords, right? Let's call query. Suppose we want to search an uh, image that there's a uh, dogs on the beach, right? And then the uh, uh, Google engine will encode the data image or they will get the key to represent what's inside the images which are the values so that's the key value relationship for search so our input, the input of a new is a query and then the query will try to match with the keys also there's a beach in the query so yeah the beach or this beach and the first image is only beach, but no dog Second one has a dog, so it's a perfect match. Score is 100, huh? It's one. The first one is 0 0.5, and the, sec the third one only has a dog, so the match is 0 0.5. So by using this approach, they can somehow find the attention of the uh, encoded data. But it's the uh, it works the uh, task to learn the query and the keys, how, how to decide uh, the numbers huh? as the basic idea of Attention. Okay, so at the they use attention and the sequence to sequence model, encoder decoder, and some other architecture, and create this model called transformer. Oh, transformer. 
like the movie. So we know that the transformer has an encoder decoder architecture. And uh, another thing is that they have multi head attention, which means they have multi duplicate the module multiple times to learn different attentions. It's called multi head attention. So they have a same attention or uh, in encoders, decoders, and the encoder decoder attentions. That's why their paper called attention is all you need because they use a lot of attention to learn the relationship between the uh, encoder and decoder data. But it was used for translation, so initially from Kung Fu. So there's a model that you can visualize the attention between different words. You can check the notebook here. It will visualize the attention. So there's a, a self attention on the sentence called the animal. The animal didn't cross the street because it was too tired. If we learn the attention right, it will know that the, the it here means the animal. By higher color, saturated color means higher attention. Or if we learn the right, there are multiple layers which learn different types of attention. But for layers five, it's not that uh, it means the 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 M. There are huge number of parameters to learn, huh? but with huge number done. Okay, so that's a basic idea of attention. Huh? We will review the architecture later. Huh? Oh, uh, okay. So well, that's about the architecture of uh, neural networks. So now let's talk about uh, deep reinforcement learning. Uh, deep reinforcement learning is about an environment. Uh, and the sound agents try to do trial and error and in the environment. The key is that the environment will create, uh, will provide a reward if you do something right uh, or negative reward if you do something wrong right? and it will provide observations. OK, so once the turn has a uh, image net breaks through, uh, it's the edX net and the chief best result. Some researchers try to combine deep learning with reinforcement learning. Uh, reinforcement learning was a uh, old research topic, but they propose to combine with neural network. And those two founders has background in video games. Oh, they have uh, they create video games, so they uh, they create they they first train the neural network to play Atari Atari games. Yeah, like like shooting or something. So here are they and the Herbert Silver try to train neural networks to play multiple games. And uh, to imagine, to imitate the human brain, how they only use single CNN neural network to learn multiple games. And they find that it's possible that the single neural network uh, can beat humans in multiple different kinds of games. Uh, so they are published a paper on, on nature. And then they are, they were very excited about the results. Uh, and then they try, decide to conquer the most difficult called game in human history, which is Go. Go. The Go is complicated because one of the main things that the, the checkerboard is larger is a 19 times 19. So it has the game tree, the search size, the possibility of different moves, uh, 10 to the power of 360. Huh? So the number is larger than the atoms in the universe. Or try to use the neural network to approximate uh, all the states. So here's the story of AlphaGo. I will skip that. So uh, he tried to challenge the Go champion. Uh, Li Su Dong. Li Su Dong was considered as the one of the best uh, Go player in human history uh, because his move is very creative, uh, very creative. So at first, uh, this one was very confident because he watched the previous play of Avago and he saw this no comparable to his uh, because he's the champion. Uh, after the, in the first in the first game, uh, this one lost to Avago with a small margin, right? small margin. Also, uh, but he's still confident and he discussed at night with his friend to how to beat Avago. Uh, they will play five games. No matter who wins three or not, they will play all the five games. 
But the second game, uh, this was lost again, and then somehow people are nervous. But uh, in the third game, he lost in the middle of the game. He gave up. He gave up earlier uh, because he see no chance to beat Avago. Uh, so now everybody was very upset. Uh, like uh, somehow, like we saw what ChatGPT can do. Uh, but in the fourth game, this don't somehow find a way uh, uh, to beat Avago. He find a single move, the only move he said that make the Avago break down in the middle and won the fourth game. This is the last the human won against the AI. OK, so it's called God's move. You can watch the documentary video of the Avago. So very touching. Anyway, um, actually, the uh, Avago paper, uh, one of the calls uh, is a Taiwanese called Aja Huang. He was a PhD of national Normal University, and he published paper that's so good that David Silver had read his paper and decided to recruit him from Taiwan to London. Okay, so write a published paper. Maybe sometimes Google will hire. You. Okay, so he is the human hand when play against for for Avago play against the Lisuto. Taiwanese PhD. So after Avago has achieved the great result, they try to do Avago zero. Previous version of Avago is to supervise learning. They use the human place to train the models. But now Avago try to start in from scratch. Here's the result of Avago zero. So it's trained by play itself. And after three days, with a lot of computers, it can surpass the AlphaGo Lee or the, the version that we don't. And then after 21 days, AlphaGo Zero achieved the AlphaGo Master, which defeated 60 top professional online. And the world champion, three out of three games. And after 40 days, AlphaGo Zero has become the best Go player in the world. So after 40 days of self planning, without any human knowledge, without any human play, uh, it's become the best player. Now everybody is learning from AI right now. Uh, uh, okay. So if you are interested in Go, you can buy Hey Jaja's class. Okay. Go class. Uh. So somehow we play Go class for farm, not for beat AI. Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, somehow DeepMind cannot uh, do better than ChatGPT, right? Still, Google. Uh, need to prove that they can do model as good as ChatGPT. And all the authors of potential are, have left Google. So, yeah, so it's not so important right now. Anyway, uh, so, yeah, history, story. Uh, things change so fast. Now, most hot topic is the generative AI. Right? Generative AI. So the generative yeah. AI was just a purpose induced by Yuan Gefei. The idea yeah. is that they he proposed an architectural called game or called game, pronounced like game or don't don't call it a gun. Or I actually, I actually know people pronounce it gun. Or it's a F U X K in Chinese. So <laughs> don't in yeah, don't pronounce like that. So next time if you walk on the street and you heard somebody say gun, or maybe they are discussing deep learning somehow, right? Yeah, it's okay. But it's better pronounced game. Huh? I check his video, he pronounced game. Huh? So oh, the idea yeah. is innovative at that time. There's a generator that generate fake data. A generator that take random noise to generate a fake image. And there's a discriminator that try to distinguish from fact to real. So those two network, the key idea, the key idea is that those two network, generator and the discriminator, they are compete with each other. So generator try to get better and the discriminator try to also get better. And until it achieve a, a, a balance, which means this 
illuminator cannot tell the difference between real and the fake. Then you have perfect fake data generator. So the most famous application of game is deep fake, right? Somehow maybe you have tried that before. I hope it's legal. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we know we know what is deep fake can do. We're entering an era in which our enemies. Okay, it's a fake Obama, but I'm not familiar with Obama, so I can't tell the difference. Okay, anyway, huh? so uh, let's create a possible attack called adversary attack. You get you can hide some noise inside a picture, and the picture looks the same for human, but it can fool the uh, deep learning model that is people. It only works with deep learning model. Okay. Because there are too many parameters and they are pretty sensitive. Okay, but uh, but but the game is very hard because there's no guarantee to achieve equilibrium equilibrium right? to achieve balance because they are compete with each other. So there are no guarantee of convergence or convergence. So people now use diffusion model, huh? so that's why you call it diffusion huh? and the uh, diffusion model is more effective. Okay. So now today's generative model are not about M. Most mostly about GPT and the stable diffusion diffusion model. A steel game was important just a few years ago. Okay, so let's call, uh, let's talk about GPT. It is called the uh, generative pre-training transformer decoders. So the original idea was to train transformer only the decoder part with a lot of data. Originally, it's not very sounds not very creative. It's just uh, use big data for transformer. Uh, attention is all you need, right? So the first one. Uh, they find it's very useful. They are trying to make a model like uh, ImageNet that can, people can reuse. So in 2018, oh, it's GPT-1. 2019 is uh, GPT-2. Oh, yeah. The model becomes larger and the uh, GPT-3. Oh. This just become larger and larger and then they find that decoder cannot only used for translation oh, but for multiple different kind of tasks in natural language. You uh, processing like classify the sentence or, or entailment or check the similarity between sentence or do question answer multi choice or multi choice. So GPT-2 was pre-trained with 60 gigabyte of internet tags, oh, 10 times larger GPT-1. Some little tricks. And GPT-3, oh, five size third meter, right, gentlemen? Not really, but for generative pre-training models, it's just matter. So how the size of GPT-3? Oh, 175 billion, dollar, uh, billion parameters. So the size, oh, oh, so actually I say the number was 700 billion is not right. Oh, it's the, suppose one parameter is safe in 40, but it's four bytes. So, so 700 gigabyte, but the number of parameters are 175 billion parameters. For GPT-3, it requires 55 years for training and uh, 4.6 million dollars. Oh. Okay. And then comes chat GPT, everybody knows the story. After the chat GPT, the open AI Close AI never published papers, so people just guess what happened. So now it's close AI after chat GPT. Okay, so they probably get idea. They say, oh yeah, we use uh, proper and we use uh, human feedback reinforcement, which means they use, uh, they hire a lot of people to give feedback to, to their model. It's actually no details. Okay, but no details. So now they can do coding better and better. So here's a concept, another terminology called foundation models, uh, coined by Stanford University. They have a center for foundation model. The idea is that we can use a basic model to do everything, right? Like ChatGPT, or 
the model they call foundation model. Now people try to use foundation model for computer vision, but fortunately computer vision was not yet be conquered by by neural network or, or large language model. Still our human can do very efficient, not human, animals, dogs, cats, can do very efficient navigation using very small neural networks. Even the dragonfly, right, the in, insects, they only have several layers of neural network, but the dragonfly can fly in the, in the air and avoid many obstacles, right? Uh, so how there's uh, some room for improvement. So everybody now is crazy about the large language model. <laughs> So that's part of this research is how to run this large language model on small computer. Right. So my recommendation is, as far as I know, best way to run language model is use Hugging Face. It's a French company. Right? It can let you try several tricks. Just a few of the most popular open source room. Huh? It has the same number of parameters as ChatGPT3, and it's free. As long as you have a GPU large enough. Okay, so yeah, I think that's probably. Okay, so this is diffusion model. Diffusion model is try just to end the Gaussian noise and then reverse. So actually, this model is much simpler than GAN. GAN is very difficult to get. And other models. It's simpler, but very effective. Combined with large language model, it becomes so powerful. It's like a stable diffusion now. Huh? So now diffusion is all you need for generative model. So far as as far as I know, so there are many free choice online. Like Mid Journey, stable diffusion, Dali. Huh? So I, maybe you have tried some of them before. This picture is famous because someone used Mid Journey to generate a fake photo and won a competition. And now they are trying to cancel the champion. Huh? So if you want a free choice, actually you can you can bin chat. You can tell bin chat to generate image. It will generate free images for you. Using Dali, huh? That's my experiment. Uh, I say create an image with a small robot sitting in a cage. And the robot is connected with electrical wires and the control server. Scientists are around the cage image in fairy tale style. So it's a free, you can try it. Yeah, <laughs> my best photo for stable TV. Best one, best one. It's a Kim Jong Kim Jong Un, very cute. North Korea. North Korea. So yeah, stable diffusion. Uh, sorry, I don't know the details. I just put this <laughs> picture for your reference. So the good thing is that stable diffusion is free, right? So gentlemen like to use it for generate some special pictures. Yeah. Mid journey hey, in the country, it's censored. You cannot generate some, you know, you know what images, but you can do it with stable diffusion. So if you want to find a good problem, you can come to this website. It will give you search what you like, and it will tell you what's the problem. You can copy and paste into stable diffusion. Yeah, another one, because uh, you know most uh, software programmers are nerds. So everybody are very enthusiastic <laughs> about training their, you know, gardeners your imaginative girlfriend, uh, so how long you are. So you can train uh, your girlfriend, use stable diffusion and uh, train them, talk to them, use chat GPT, and basically you have a virtual girlfriend. Oh, congratulations. Okay, that's a perfect, sympathetic, but anyway, anyway, if you really need a virtual girlfriend, you can download model from here, it's called Laura. Oh, I never tried that, not yet. Oh. Four, but you can try it. I saw so many images. Four. Huh? So there's a new publication. A Meta crazily publish basically open source model every every two weeks. I would say that. Huh? So it's one of them. Huh? I didn't follow them so much. They are trying to because they are. I guess because they are leg. 
they are not as good as ChatGPT, so they try to open source as many as possible. They will try to uh, help others to catch up to ChatGPT. Okay, so uh, finally, let's talk about some limitations of deep learning. Huh? So far, they have no idea of real world because most of data huh, for computer vision, they have no idea of real world. Most data are trained using 2D data, right? So if you if you rotate the image, it's not their fault because we only train our model with 2D images, so they don't know the real world is 3D. Huh? But it's very, very difficult to train with 3D, but people are doing that. So if you rotate the image, they will think the garbage, the school bus becomes a garbage truck or punching bag or snow prone. If you do some special tricks on your motorcycle, they will identify it as a parachute, uh, obviously. Uh, so old result. Uh, so that's a famous uh, accident made by Tesla, right? 再来看国道中山高加一路段上午接连发生了两起的车祸比白色大货车横倒在高速公路特斯拉驾驶疑似是开启自动辅助驾驶系统Engineer. And the church sometimes the uh, right possible something but incorrect non-sensible answer. Huh? So as, uh, in Chinese say they even uh, they are saying uh, making more and more sense. Huh? So uh, usually I need to double check their results in Google. So finally I still use Google directory. But now they can write many good uh, uh, progress. Huh? So how can we control the super intelligence huh? as a final topic? So uh, the CEO of OpenAI huh? sounds not responsive, uh, responsible. Huh? He said that we will lead to end, but uh, there will be great companies like OpenAI, which means he, he can make money. Huh? So anyway, let's dismiss him. Huh? So Java mostly like to replace AI. Okay. But uh, most the secure jobs against the chat GPT is uh, mostly likely the machine operators, uh, machine operators, which means when we need to combine our programming skill with our hands, right, to assemble maybe robots, drones, okay, cooks. I don't know why cooks. Uh, yeah, issue. So yeah, Hinton tried to leave Google and uh, issue some warnings. Uh, issue some warnings. Eventually, yeah, which surprised me. But uh, okay. yeah, you can go back to watch your original video. Sorry, it's in Chinese. But basically, Hinton said that. Uh, his original idea was to develop a model that resembles our brain, right? Remember biological intelligence. But somehow he started to think maybe, maybe, maybe the silicon intelligence is better way than our brain, right? First, they can survive forever, huh? immortal, as long as there's power. And the silicon brain never forget things. And somehow ChatGPT already have a thousand times 
common sense than or ordinary human, but their connection is around uh, 100 billion. Uh, we have uh, 10,000 billion, so it's uh, hard to imagine that what happened if the connection uh, becomes 10 times. It's hard to imagine that how JPGD can do if it becomes 100 times larger. And also the digital models can exchange ideas, exchange what they do, or exchange knowledge immediately. They can copy and paste, copy their self, right? Call their self. But somehow human cannot duplicate the knowledge, right? That's why I'm here to teach you. I think this is why our humans are so creative because we are not just copy knowledge from others, so we learn and uh, think yeah, by our own self. So that's why humans are so creative. Yeah. So and then the and then uh, he think that the chat GB start to think uh, because when you talk to it, it try to figure out what you are doing or saying. Hinton thinks that's a process of thinking. Uh. And he think the fake knowledge is actually can be controlled like the uh, fake currency, right? Fake currency. Or by need to be strict, strict control, strictly monitored. So each news or image generated by AI should be highlighted. Or those should require the creator to highlight as all this data or image was generated by AI. So this controllable, huh? but the uh, a real uh, worry of Hinton is that uh, how can we control the general super intelligence if it becomes smarter than us? Oh, smarter than us. Of course, uh, Yana can say that uh, the one who control people is not the smartest guy, right? Because most politi politicians are stupid. Uh, so uh, he think uh, it's not uh, this. You don't think that AI becomes smarter, you want to control us. Uh, it's about intention. Uh, but people have different opinion. Uh, as uh, Hinton's opinion. So in Hinton says that uh, all the humans should be work together to prevent what happened. Uh, just like how we prevent the nuclear nuclear weapon. All the humans are uh, on the same boat, right? Uh, so the good news is that uh, even in the worst time between America and Russia, uh, Russia uh, we still co-work to prevent the nuclear nuclear war, right? Uh, nuclear war. And he's not uh, ask everybody to stop developing AI. It's not realistic. AI can still do many good things, like develop new medicines, prolong our life, and uh, yeah. Generate a virtual girlfriend or boyfriend. Huh? Anyway, so uh, but he just uh, asked everybody who developed this algorithm to be careful. Huh? He think that uh, everybody huh, in this classroom or everybody, every human, when you develop AI, you need to spend 50% of time to know how to control it. Huh? Today, everybody has spent 99% of time to how to develop a new, new functions, but only 1% on prevent the super intelligence. Huh? So he asked everybody to emphasize, put emphasis on these things. So finally, he said that it's too optimistic or too pessimistic are, uh, are all not good or all bad. We just need to admit that we don't know what will happen in the future and do our best to prevent that we will be controlled by uh, AI, silicon intelligence. Okay. Finally, he says, uh, there's a possibility that uh, maybe uh, our biological intelligence, the purpose of our human intelligence is to create silicon intelligence, super intelligence. It's, uh, we are just a part of the evolution. Also, huh? our job is done when we create uh, silicon super intelligence. Huh? It's possible. Huh? So that's uh, when you develop the uh, algorithm, think about that. Huh? But the good news that uh, the one who uh, manufactured the silicon brand neuron is Taiwan, right? So Taiwan company uh, market price goes skyrocket. 
Uh, even if some of them are just uh, manufacturer, they didn't do any real things. So, so finally, the only one who is making the most money is NVIDIA. Everybody, no matter if your model works or not, everybody needs GPU. Huh? So he's the happiest person so far. Okay, so let's this class. Oh, thank you for joining today's class. Uh, hope to see you next week. Uh.